Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Natasha. If it is your first time here, today's video I'm going to be doing another installment of the series I started on my channel called What I Watched This Month. Basically, it's just me sitting here getting ready. I'm not really talking about the makeup. It's just giving me something to do with my hands. You know me, I move my hands a lot when I'm talking, so it's nice for me to have, you know, something to do. So sitting here getting ready and I'm just talking to you guys about some of the things I watched this month, whether it be TV shows, movies, YouTubers, TikTokers, just things that I have consumed visually. Uh, I love watching TV and movies. I've already said this before a million times on my channel and I just wanted to quickly say that there is going to be spoilers for sure. So if you don't like spoilers, don't watch this. This isn't going to be all new release TV shows and movies. Some of the things I'm talking about may be older movies that I'm watching for the first time or movies that I love and I am re-watching. I just wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I watched this month because I love movies and TV and I love reading about and talking about movies and TV. So that's what we're doing. If you're interested, just keep watching. Now close your eyes. So this month is October and I have been watching a lot, a lot of horror films, horror TV shows, true crime things, so much. And I have been trying to throw in some happier things in between some comedies and stuff, but this year for October, Spencer and I decided to watch a horror movie every single day of October. And I think that it's kind of been affecting me a little bit. I have been having a lot of scary dreams. I'm not going to talk about every single scary movie we've watched so far. That would be like almost 30 movies and that would be like the longest video ever. But I do have a few of them that I just really enjoy that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And if you are interested in like the full list of what I watched this month, let me know in the comments down below and I could totally just leave that for you. I didn't want to talk about all 31 movies because I thought that would be a little repetitive horror film after horror film. Like, eh. I don't know. Okay, but let's just get into it. I'm rambling right now. So, got my little list here on my phone. So, the first thing I want to talk about is a TV show, actually, and it is season two of the TV show The Boys on Amazon. I believe I talked about this show in my last What I Watched This Month video. I talked about the first season, and you guys, the second season is even better. This show is so good. It's, it's evil. Like everyone is evil in the show. It's basically a show about if there was superheroes in real life. And it's kind of almost more like realistic. I feel like, like if you watch most superhero movies, the superheroes are usually like good people. Like they never make mistakes. Like they're all good. And the thing I like about this show is it is to me a way more realistic uh, viewpoint of how superheroes would really be. So they're not all good guys. None of them really are good guys. If I'm going to be completely honest with you. But the second season is so phenomenal. I still hate the one of the main characters. His name is Huey. He is a regular person. He's supposed to be like a his character is like a good guy who's like trying to like go against the government and go against superheroes because they're evil. But I just can't stand him. Like he's so unlikable to me. He's so unlikable. He's so whiny and he's so sensitive and like he always just has his feelings hurt. He like I just can't stand his character and I know he's supposed to be the like relatable everyone loves him character but I just don't like him. I really enjoyed that in this second season it gave a lot more background for some of the main characters. One of my favorite characters actually is this guy named Frenchie. So he is like a regular person. He's not a superhero but he also is working to like go against superheroes. Like you kind of learn more about why he has a hatred for superhero type people and like the government and you learn more of like his backstory with his old relationships and his friends and I thought it was really interesting the way they did it and I really liked how they built upon his character because he is one of my favorite characters in the show as well as the love interest to him who is a girl named Kamiko. She is a super but she doesn't talk. So this character, this actress and this character is so well written and so amazing that she doesn't talk at all. You never hear her say words. I kept waiting for her to talk. Like I'm like, oh, they have to have her talk. They have to. Like what a crazy way to end it is her talking. She never talks, but she exudes so much emotion and she's just such a good actress. And she has this like, she doesn't do traditional sign language. Part of her story is that she kind of made up her own type of sign language because she lost her voice 
And her character is so much more than just the love interest for that other guy. Like, her character is so badass. Like, she's one of the most badass supers, I think, out of all of them. I love her so much. And you learn more about, like, her backstory and just more of her personality. In the first season, I feel like her character is more just kind of, like, uh, there. She's almost just, like, a prisoner. And in the second season, I really, really love the development of her character. Also, in the second season, you get introduced to a new bad guy. I mean, I definitely think she's a bad guy. In the beginning, they try to spin it as if she's not the bad guy. But I am so good. I am so good at calling bad guys in movies and TV shows and stuff and in real life I feel like honestly but her name is Stormfront she's a super she's like the new super she's cool she's super woke like she's good on social media bad vibes from the first episode with her in it they really spin her to being like oh my god like we love her she's so amazing like you get those feelings and I was just like nope there is no possible way that I'm gonna like this character like something's up with her and I was right She's the bad guy. I mean, I'm sure that there are some crazy people in the world who would argue that she wasn't a bad guy, but she's a bad guy. So you get that character who, even though I hate her, she was a good addition to the show, and then it basically still is kind of the same, like, fighting the government, fighting the superheroes plot line. Like, it almost is one of those things where so much happens and at the end nothing has changed, and I think that's kind of like the message, the bigger message about the show is like you could fight the fight forever but sometimes like things just don't change because government is evil blah 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 basically what the second season is about but it is still phenomenal I believe there was like eight or nine episodes they're like 45 minutes a piece so so good okay so the next show that I watched I actually binge watched in one whole entire day was the second season or the second collection I find that Netflix doesn't call it seasons they call it collections whatever. The second collection of Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Listen, Unsolved Mysteries is one of the greatest shows of all time. They brought it back and it's still good. So what it basically is, is each episode is like a mini documentary. They're about an hour, 45 minutes long about a true crime case that is unsolved. So like a disappearance or a kidnapping or a murder, something like that that has gone unsolved and it's, it's so well done. Netflix really does good documentary style movies and I find that these are really well done. They're so interesting because it's so crazy how cases can just be unsolved, especially some like, okay, so the first episode in the second collection of Unsolved Mysteries is about a murder of a political figure in the United States and they, they've never solved it. Like it's never been solved and there's so much footage and there's so much evidence and information and a lot of the cases are like that where it's just like, how? How have we not figured this out? How has someone not been prosecuted? Like, one of the episodes, I believe it's like the second or third episode, is about a woman's body who was found in a hotel room. She was deceased. And they couldn't they couldn't give, find out who she was. She had no ID, no passport. All the labels on all of her clothes were ripped off. Somehow she was staying at a five-star hotel room and didn't have a leave, leave down a credit card or anything. Like, they looked for her ever. Like, no one has ever been able to name who this woman is. So we're like, who is she? Who? Where did she come from? What happened to her? Unsolved. So if you are in to true crime stuff, Unsolved Mysteries, I mean, is a must-watch. It just is. Like I said, it's real cases. It's like mini documentaries. It'll have you thinking you know what happened. Like there's a few of them I've watched that I'm like, that person is so guilty. This is totally what happened. Like wh why can't they do anything about it? And there's some of them you watch where you're like, none of this makes sense. What is happening? What is the world? Like what? This episode is going to be a little bit more heavy because it is October. Like I said, I have been watching a lot more like horror thriller type things. So the next thing I want to talk about is the newest documentary on Netflix. It's called, uh, it's a Chris Watts documentary. I believe it's called An American Family Murder or American, yeah, I believe it's An American Family Murder. It's about the Chris Watts, Shanann Watts case and I hate him. I hate him so much. It is just basically going over the case. It's a solved case. He's been prosecuted. He is in prison now. Thank 
the Lord, but it's just basically going over that case. And because of the fact that they had such a heavy social media presence, she was uh, big on social media. She went on Facebook Live all the time. She was just really, really big about posting videos and updates and being very open with the people that follow her. That there was a lot of information on this case, a lot of video footage they could use. There was a lot of text messages. Just there was so much evidence in this case and it's so sad and it's so tragic. If you haven't heard of the case, I think this documentary is done very well. It has so much information in it. It is very heavy though. So I don't recommend it to most people because it is like sad. Like you're not going to be happy after watching it. You're going to feel bummed out, but it is very interesting. There is a lot of information and it's very well done. So if you're into true crime, I definitely recommend watching that. Like I said, it's on Netflix. All right, so next let's go into movies. Um, I'm going to start it off with a little more lighthearted of a movie because, like I said, I have been watching a lot more serious things this month. The first movie I want to talk about is a movie I've seen a million times probably. It was like one of those movies you have on tape as a kid and so you watch it all the time. A Night at the Roxbury. Spencer put this on the other night, like right before we went to bed. It was like right after we watched some sort of mo scary movie and we just needed something light. And honestly, I think we both didn't expect us to sit through and watch the whole movie, but we did. And I was laughing like the whole way through. It's an old, old <laughs> comedy movie. It's Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan and it's hilarious. And one thing that me and Spencer were talking about after we watched this movie, so quick synopsis of what the movie is, Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan are brothers, but they're like in their thirties, they're bums. They live at home with their rich parents. I don't think they're supposed to be in their 30s. I think they're supposed to be in their 20s, but they look like they're in their 30s or 40s. And, and they're bums. They live at home. They work for their parents' a floral shop. Their parents are rich by owning a floral shop, which doesn't really make a whole sense. They have a mansion. They have a nice car. And all they care about is going out, clubbing, and picking up girls. That's their whole thing. Except for they're not, like, smooth and suave and, like, get a lot of girls. Like, they're they're dorks, but they think they're really cool. So that's like the funny thing about it. it has Molly Shannon in it, who is hilarious. Uh, so that's what this whole movie is about, basically. I was laughing so hard throughout the movie. Like I said, this was a movie I did watch a lot as a kid because like we just had the tape at home, but I haven't really watched it since I've been an adult. And I forgot how truly funny it was without being like homophobic or racist or like super sexist. Like I feel like when you watch a lot of old comedy movies, they're filled with like sexual assault, uh, a lot of really racist stereotypes and racist jokes and like homophobia. Like a lot of old comedies are like that because at the times that was what was popular or funny or whatever. This movie doesn't really have that. And I didn't really think about that until the end of the movie that there really wasn't anything like that. It was just like a nice, innocent comedy movie from back in the day. It has great house music in it. I really liked it. Like I said, the actors and actresses in it are hilarious. It's one of those like comedy movies that was so quotable at the time. Like I'm sure when this movie came out, everyone was quoting it for weeks and weeks and months. Like, you know how like when Borat came out and everyone was doing Borat impersonations or like when Step Brothers first came out, everyone was doing Step Brothers lines. Like when this movie came out, everyone was quoting this movie and it was so fun to watch. It was so lighthearted. I love the story. I honestly forgot how much of it I still remembered. Like, have you ever done that? You rewatch a movie from like back in the day and you still remember like all the lines and all the jokes and stuff. And so you're like saying them to yourself and laughing as the movie's happening. Like I was shook with how much of the movie I still remembered. And it was really good. I really enjoyed watching it. We watched that on Amazon Prime. It was a free Prime movie with your Prime membership. Okay, so the next movie was a movie that Spencer and I had not seen before either of us. It was a foreign film. It's called Let the Right Ones In. It is a Swedish film, and so it is spoke in Swedish? I should look that up. I believe it's Swedish, though, uh, that it's spoken in, and it is so good. Now, here's the thing. is It's long, and it's one of those movies where it's like, kind of boring but not boring and also also though it's super visually appealing though so like even though you feel kind of bored you can't stop looking at it because it's like really just visually nice to look at 
This movie is about a little boy who is bullied. He just has a really hard time at school and he makes friends with a little girl who is a vampire. Okay, so you're thinking like, okay, I already know what's going to happen. It's a vampire movie. This is nothing like any vampire movie I have ever seen before. I will say this movie does have quite a few plot holes in it. Quite a few questions left unanswered. Like throughout the movie and at the end of the movie, I had quite a few questions. I do think it has a higher Rotten Tomato score than it should have. It is good. It is very visually appealing. I like the story. If you have an issue with watching like intense bullying, when I say intense bullying, I hope you are getting what I'm saying here. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. There was a couple times that I just like couldn't really watch it. It just made me feel really uncomfortable. Uh, but that being said, it's a good movie. It's a good scary movie. I definitely felt creeped out. I definitely felt weirded out at the end. I couldn't tell who I was rooting for, who I wasn't rooting for. There are some good like scary horror gore scenes. It's it's intense. The beginning of the movie, I'm the first few minutes, you're just like, what is happening? Like the person you think is the bad guy is not the bad guy. We found this movie on a list that it was just like best foreign horror films. I enjoyed it. It is long. Like I said, it is like boring and interesting at the same time. I think the reason that it is somewhat boring is because there is so many like plot holes and questions throughout it. But visually, I think it is just beautiful so if you are into foreign films I recommend it it is a little like you're gonna be left kind of like huh I but like how does that but like that but what about another horror film that we watched it was actually a rewatch for me and a first time watch for Spencer was the movie Heathers this is an old 80s horror movie it has Winona Ryder, Christian Slater, it has Shannon Doherty, so a lot of the big 80s stars at the time, and it is like a satire dark comedy. From what I read online, the director and the writer of this movie really were making this movie as like making fun of typical 80s movies, so really they were making fun of like John Hughes movies, and they were turning that into like a horror satire comedy. So Spencer at the beginning was kind of confused about the movie. He's like, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. Is this a comedy? Is this a horror movie? Like, what is it? And I was like, listen, it's a, it's a horror comedy satire. Like you have to go into it knowing that it's a comedy making fun of high school movies. It's also a horror movie. So the plot of the movie is basically when Nona Ryder is part of this group called the Heathers. The three main like bitches at the school, their name are Heather, they're like the popular girls, they're pretty, they're rich, this whole thing. And Winona's writer's character is friends with them. Her name is not Heather, her name is Veronica. And, and basically she hates her life, she hates the popular girls, they're so like vapid and they're so shallow and she just wants to be friends with her nerdy friends again and get out of the popular clique, blah 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 blah. So when Nona Ryder's character ends up like having a relationship with Christian Slater, who I find very annoying. I don't know what it is about him. The way he talks, I find is super annoying. Like I was making fun of him the whole movie because, so you have to remember as you're watching it that it's, it's making fun of high school movies and act being like more realistic. So all the characters are like, they're saying things that are like so turned up over the edge, like. Christian Slater's character says, like, there's no such thing as stupid questions. Like, he, like, the way he talks drives me nuts. It drives me so nuts at all. And then he'll be like, that's the stupidest question I ever heard. Like, every single line that he has is, like, over the, the top, cool, witty guy, you know? So his character, like, annoys me. But basically the movie is about Christian Slater and one other writer's character accidentally kill one of Nona Ryder's friends, and then they accidentally kill another one of their friends, and then it turns out that Christian Slater was the bad guy all along, and it's about her fighting Christian Slater from blowing up the school. Like, it's, it makes no sense while you're watching it. Like, you're like, there's so many, so many plot holes in this, and then you have to remind yourself, like, okay, it's, it's making fun of movie. It's not going to make sense. It's a satire. But it is so good. I, 
I think everyone should watch it. If you like scary movies, even if you don't really like scary movies, I think you should watch it. It's made in the 80s, and so nothing is really, like, that scary. Honestly, the scariest part of it to me is the two, like, jock characters who are major creeps. They're the guys that you would never, ever, ever want to be left in a, ro a room alone with, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Like, they're, to me, the scariest part of the movie. But it's cool because, you know, they get what they deserve. Spencer really liked it once he kind of, like, figured out what, how to, like, perceive the movie. He really enjoyed it. I love the movie. It was on Hulu. It's free to watch. I think it's one of Winona Ryder's best roles. She plays this, like, I'm angsty, too cool, weird girl role really well. And I really liked it. It's great. Like I said, it's on Hulu. It's a good old movie that still holds up. The next movie I want to talk about is a movie called As Above, So Below. <sighs> I have seen this movie probably like a dozen times. It's just as scary as the first time I've seen it. It is one of the scariest movies I have ever seen and it really like mind fucks you too while you're watching it. It is about a group of people who go down into the catacombs because they're looking for some like hidden treasure that some philosopher left at one point. Okay so when you hear that you're kind of like, I've seen this movie before. You know, like, it's catacombs, it's not that creepy, I've seen it before. No, you haven't, okay? Like I said, one of the scariest movies I've ever watched in my life. It is such, such a mindfuck, and it's so creepy because they're, like, underground, firstly. I would never, ever, ever go into the catacombs. Like, I'm not an underground type of person. I don't like going into caves. There's, like, the Seattle Underground Tour. I'm not into it. I don't like going underground. It freaks me out. It's not my thing. Oh my god, the idea of going into like a mine shaft, like, you know, like miners getting coal. <sighs> I would never. Like, I am not good with underground stuff. Just freaks me out. Don't know what it is. So, the movie is all underground, okay? And it's like a supernatural... The devil... The seven layers of hell scary type of movie. It's not super religious, but it does like, I think like hell is like, you know, the big kind of finding like the gate to hell is kind of like the big plot line in the movie. And it is terrifying. It is so scary. There's so many moments that don't even feel like, like the, there's a phone that's ringing down there and they're like, how is the phone? Or, you know, like there's stuff like that, which like in normal movies would be just kind of stupid that are terrifying. It's like bone chilling when you hear this phone ringing down there because so many other things have happened up to that point. And when it happens, you're like, it's one of those movies where like, I don't want to watch it. Like I'm sitting there like this. The whole movie because I'm like so afraid. So good. Every single time I watch it, I'm scared. Every single time I watch it, I have to like watch it in the morning. I refuse to watch it at nighttime like because... I don't know. Something about it being at night makes it more scary. The ending of the movie is so good. The ending is so good. Like, at the end of the movie, you're left like, how, how will those people ever live their life? How will they ever continue their life after what they just went through? After what they just saw? And went through how can how can they keep living because I could not do it I couldn't do it if I went through what they went through in this movie and then was alive at the end I couldn't live I could I would go crazy like I, I don't know how they couldn't so the way that the movie ends is so good the whole movie is so good it's so scary and it's not corny like a lot of movies are kind of corny like when you really think about it you're like yeah that was scary but it's like whatever, or there's not, like, a lot of jump scares, like, it's just, ugh. like I said, it's a movie about archaeologists, basically, I don't even know if they're archaeologists, they're more just, like, treasure hunters going through the catacombs, and you think you know, but you don't know. I recommend it to anyone who wants to be terrified. It's scary. It's on Netflix, As Above, So Below. I only watch it, like, once a year. Maybe, I've probably seen it couple times a year, but every time, like I said, it messes with me. <laughs>
So I watched all of the Harry Potter movies in one weekend this month. We started Friday night when Spencer got off work and we watched them until Sunday night. It definitely took all of those days. We went hard on the Harry Potter. I'm actually wearing a Harry Potter shirt today. Let me show you. Dementors, Dementors. So yeah, that's what we did. We binge watched all of them over a weekend, which it was nice because they felt, you know, like fall Halloween type movies. I mean, it is witches and wizards after all. And they aren't like scary. They're intense. I mean, I love Harry Potter. I, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you my love for Harry Potter. Just know that it's true. Know that I love these movies. Yes, JK Rowling really just kind of like slapped us all in the face recently, but I still love Harry Potter. I'm never going to lose my love for Harry Potter. They make me feel so good. I love these movies. They honestly just bring me happiness. And I have seen the movies so many times and read the books so many times that I literally can just lay there. I don't have to look at the screen. I could be laying there with my eyes closed and I can see the whole movie playing out in my head. Like, I just know. So that's what we did for a weekend. It was so nice to have just like a little break from like the really scary stuff. And just to relax, we made butterbeer, we ate soup, I made soup. It was just like a nice, really good fall weekend. I was lazy on the couch the whole entire time wearing my Harry Potter shirts. It was just great. Definitely recommend the movies. They are like not for free anywhere. Every once in a while you can like catch one on TV. I don't think Netflix has ever had any of them. I don't know what's up with that because I feel like, you know what, I now that I'm thinking about it, I never ever see Harry Potter movies free to stream. I own them, so I don't really have to worry about that, but I do notice that I never see them anywhere to stream. I like, I wonder what that is, not even on Amazon or anything, so. Another movie I rewatched this month is Jennifer's Body. First of all, Megan Fox. Must I say anything else? Like, she is such a hottie, like, I could just watch a movie of her not doing anything. Just her walking around cleaning her house. Like, she is so hot, and... This movie is so great. It is another like comedy horror film, comedy satire type of film. It is about uh, Mega Fox and her best friend Amanda Seinfried. Seed Seedfried. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. They're besties. They're in high school, even though it's so unbelievable that Megan Fox is supposed to be like 16 and Amanda Seyfried's supposed to be 16. Like it's one of those high school movies where no one looks like they're in high school. And Basically, I'm giving major spoilers here, Megan Fox gets like kind of low-key kidnapped by this shitty band that comes and plays in their town and they, she tells them she's a virgin and they sacrifice her to the devil, but she's not really a virgin so she gets like possessed by a demon and in order to remain like young and beautiful and feeling super powerful and like being indestructible, she has to eat men like vampire style eat them doesn't really make a whole lot of sense they don't really like explain it very much they kind of just like brush over it but they don't really like explain all the details so basically that's what the movie is about it's about her eating dudes and then her best friend she eats her best friend's boyfriend and then it turns into like a whole thing it's a great movie. It is such a good, like, high school, stupid, scary movie. There are some definite, like, scary moments. It has a very Pacific Northwest vibes. Lots of trees. It's kind of gloomy the whole time. Like, it has a good Halloween holiday feel. And so, basically, yeah, the movie is just about Megan Fox killing all these dudes at her school and then her friend finding out about it and trying to kill her, stop her, and then... That's the movie. I really enjoy it. I enjoy it for more reasons than just, you know, watching Megan Fox. It's funny. It's witty. It's a great 2000s movie. A 2000s teen style scary movie. Uh, this was on Hulu, I believe, as well. Hulu has, like, a lot of good movies recently, I've noticed. If you don't have Hulu, it might be worth checking out. I feel like sometimes Hulu has better stuff than Netflix, but last time I felt that way, I canceled my Netflix and Netflix dropped like 10 things that I wanted to watch, so what do I know? All right, the next movie I want to talk to you guys about is a, another comedy horror movie. Apparently, I've just been really liking the comedy horror movies. This one is called What We Do in the Shadows. It's one of my favorite vampire movies of all time, and it is straight up a comedy. I think they only call it horror because there's like blood in it, death. You know, so I think they kind of have to call it a horror movie, but to me it's like straight up a comedy. 
What it is, is it's a like mockumentary. So it basically is about a group of vampires who all live together. They're all roommates and they're all old. Like they have been around for a long time. Like one of them is like a one of the first, I think he's supposed to be like Vlad the Impaler, he's like one of the first vampires, and then there's another one that's from like the Renaissance, like they're all very old dudes, and they're roommates, and they're being, they're having this like documentary made of them and their lives about them getting ready to go to this like monster gala at the end of the year that always happens, and <laughs> it's hilarious. This movie makes me laugh so hard. During the movie, they have misadventures of trying to like eat and making a huge like one of the vampires is every time he kills someone he like messes it up which you're like you've been alive for thousands of years you probably know what you're doing but every time he like bites the jugular and it's just like like dumb so it's just hilarious like there is a few like dumb little moments but it's just like funny overall one of the plot lines in the movie is that they end up accidentally turning this like younger guy into a vampire and they're having to like teach him how to be a vampire without like getting caught or telling everyone and he's like becomes a new roommate and they go through you know roommate fights and all of that and then they make a friend who is a a human which is like something that's never happened and it's so funny because to them he's like the best guy everyone in the movie unanimously loves this guy there's a werewolves in the movie and I have never seen a cast of people so perfectly cast as werewolves it, it's so f I'm laughing thinking about like I don't want to just sit here and just quote the whole movie but that's what I want to do because that's how funny I think this movie is it is so great. It's actually like pretty short. I think it's only like an hour. Like it's not even a full 90 minutes. Like it's like a short little movie, but it's, it's so funny and it has all like the classic like werewolf and vampire tropes and stuff like that, but it's just hilarious. It's, it's, they're making fun of documentaries. They're making fun of people who take stuff so too seriously, like vampire stuff. And they're showing like a realistic viewpoint of what it would be like. And I love this movie. I've seen it a bunch of times and it makes me laugh out loud every single time I watch it. So I definitely recommend it to everyone. Even if you're really not into like scary stuff or vampires and stuff, I think it's really funny and I think you would like it. So definitely check that out. That one's on Hulu as well, actually. The last movie I want to talk about is a comedy movie. This is another one of those movies that we just threw on after we watched something scary just because we wanted something for a few minutes to kind of distract us. And it is the movie Big Daddy. This is like Adam Sandler's biggest movie. This movie came out in the 90s. I've seen this movie. I think most people have seen this movie. I can't, I think it's probably been 10 years since the last time I watched it. And it is really good. It is a really good comedy movie. Sometimes like, I like Adam Sandler, but if we can all be real here, like the past 10 years, his movies haven't been like great. Like he has had some really good movies back in the day. And recently they're kind of all like a little corny, a little lame. So I kind of forgot that when we started watching this movie and I was expecting to be rolling my eyes the whole time. But it's hilarious. It is Adam Sandler, Jon Stewart, who I forgot was an actor before he had a late night show. Um, Cole and Dylan Sprouse play the little boy in it. It has uh, no, 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 Joey King, I believe is her name, a bunch of bigger actors, a lot of people that are repetitive in Adam Sandler movies like Rob Schneider's in it. So it has like the, you know, original Adam Sandler feel for movies. The plot of the movie, if you haven't seen it before, I would assume most people have seen it, is that a little boy gets dropped off at Adam Sandler's door one day with just a note saying like, here's your son, take care of him. It's not his son though, it's his friend's son who is on an airplane on the way to China for some business trip or whatever. So Adam Sandler just decides like, I'll be this kid's dad, like I want to adopt this kid, which as an adult watching this movie, I'm like, this could have went so wrong. <laughs> like, as watching this movie as an adult, you see everything wrong with this movie, but I think as a kid, you kind of were like, oh, totally believable. Thank goodness Adam Sandler's character is in a creepazoid because this kid could have had it a lot different. But basically what the movie is, is Adam Sandler's character is kind of just like a burnout. He's kind of bummy. He's not like, a, has a lot going for himself in life. And he takes in this kid and decides like, I'm gonna raise this kid. Like, I'm gonna be a dad. It's what the whole movie is about. And then at the end, you know, obviously the kid has to go with his 
real family, but it's about him building this relationship with this kid and like hanging out with this kid. Hilarious. I forgot how funny this movie was. And there's like a lot of things that make no sense. Like, okay, this is taking place in New York, New York City, like Manhattan. Okay. He goes to the social services office and it's like the size of a classroom. It is the smallest, tiniest little like Makes an, I'm like, there's no possible way that the social services department in New York would be that tiny. No, it doesn't make sense. So there's things like that in the movie where you're just like, what? But it is actually a really high budgeted film. I'm pretty sure it is his like top grossing film that he's ever done. It has, like I said, classic Adam Sandler in it. It's really great. It's funny without really like making fun of people. It's, I really like, I think it's a really good movie. It's genuinely a good movie. It pulls at your heartstrings at the, there's one point in the movie where you're just like, oh, my heart. Like I really expected when I was watching this movie to be rolling my eyes and thinking it was stupid the whole time, but it is a good old movie. And I'm like, okay, lots of plot holes, lots of things that would clearly never happen, but it's good. I really love it. It was just on Netflix. It's a good, just happy watch. If you want to throw something on while you're making dinner, or if you need a little, something a little bit lighter to brighten your mood, I definitely recommend it. Okay, so let's get into some TikTokers that I have been loving watching. I am like addicted to TikTok. It's one of those apps where you open it up and three hours later, you're like, how am I still scrolling? How am I still watching these videos? And I follow a lot of people actually, like there are some people whose videos I really look forward to seeing every single day. So those are some of the people I'm going to talk to you about. The first person I want to talk to you about, her handle name is Head of the Hoochies and I wouldn't really say that there is like a theme to her content. She kind of just posts whatever she wants. She posts about her cat. She posts about just what's on her mind, issues. She's so funny to me. I find her so hilarious. As I'm watching her videos, I laugh so hard. She's gorgeous. Her hair always looks great. She always has the prettiest fingernails, like acrylics. She always has the prettiest acrylics. And I just love her videos. She literally makes me laugh. A lot of her videos are only like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And I bust up laughing in most of them. Like I just find her very entertaining to watch, very entertaining to listen to. And that's pretty much it. Like TikTok, there doesn't really need to be like a lot of substance to it. Like you really just need to be entertaining. You need to be witty. You need to like grab me in. And I love her videos. I find her to be very funny. I find myself like scrolling back through her videos because they just make me laugh. She's very matter of fact when she talks. She's very in your face and I love that. Check her out. Head of the Hoochies. Right here. Check her out. Hilarious. This next TikTok account blows my mind. It's called What About Bunny? Okay. This is an account that I just randomly saw a video of one day. I clicked on the profile and I have told so many people about this dog, okay? The dog's name is Bunny. It's a doodle. I don't know if it's a labradoodle. I don't know that many facts about it. What I do know is this dog can talk, okay? And I know you're thinking, oh, I've seen videos of dogs like howling and talking. No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It is like a staples button system. So each one of these buttons says like a different word. Like one of them is Bunny, which is the dog's name. One of them is mom, one of them's dad. Park, outside, poop. The dog tells you when it has to poop. This dog literally knows like 200 words. It's so insane. I literally check on it every single day because the dog is continuously learning. Like right now, the owner is teaching the dog morning, afternoon, nighttime. Like she is having conversations with this dog of like, no, tomorrow afternoon, we will go to the park. And the dog understands what she's saying. Like some of the videos I've seen of this dog are so crazy. Like one of them that just blew my mind out of this world was now was the dog explaining that there was something hurting it in its paw. And obviously like it's not full sentences. Like they are kind of broken up. It is kind of how you would talk to like a toddler. So the dog goes bunny paw ouch. Okay. So she's like, what's wrong with your paw? And it goes stranger paw. So the person's like, let me see your paw. Let me see your paw. So the dog comes over, hands her the paw. She goes through his fingers and there's like a big ass fucking sliver or something in its paw. Like 
This dog blow, <laughs> blows my mind. You have to really watch it to believe it. It is so crazy. The dog, it has to go to the bathroom and goes, bunny outside poop, bunny outside pee. If it sees like a raccoon outside, it'll be like stranger, stra like it's so insane to me how many words this dog knows and how much this dog understands. And you can like visually see on the dog's face that it's understanding the questions it's being asked or what it's being told because it kind of like does that dog thing, you know, where dogs like, huh? Huh? And you can see it like walking around all of these buttons on the ground looking for what it wants to say and then it hits it and then you're just like, I'm obsessed with this dog. Like, I'm not even a dog person. I'm definitely more of a cat person than a dog person. And this dog has blown my mind. This dog is so smart and it just really shows you how smart some dogs can be. It, it knows the difference between morning, afternoon, and night. What? And you know, dogs are just like so pure that it even will be like, I love you, mom. I love you, dad. Like it hits these buttons. That's the voice that the buttons are in. Like when she hits the button, it's like outside. Like it's a robotic kind of voice. But check out this dog, okay? It is the smartest dog I've ever seen in my life. The next TikToker that I have just been loving lately is 420dogface208. You probably know him for the iconic cranberry juice video where he's drinking cranberry juice on a longboard, listening to Fleetwood Mac. I've been following him before that. He's just like... He's iconic, he's legendary, he's amazing, he's so positive, like his vibes are just so positive. All of his videos are of just him being positive, or him vibing, or him dancing, and it's just like you watch his videos and you feel good, you feel happy, he always has a big smile on his face, like he's one of those people that like even if you see just like a 30 second clip, you're just like, it makes you happy, you know, it makes you feel good. I love following him for that reason, I just feel like he always just is pushing good vibes out and like I need that. I find him to be really funny. I just really like watching his videos. I recommend him to everyone. It's just good vibes and everyone could use extra good vibes in their life. Okay, so I'm not gonna put any mascara on today because honestly, I really wanna take a nap after this and I just don't wanna have mascara on while I'm taking a nap. But I have one last TikToker that I wanna talk to you guys about and the handle name is Benny Yes. I have posted numerous of this account's TikToks on my Insta stories. I like all of their videos. <laughs> it's hilarious. They're so funny to me. It is two boys and they're doing like covers of songs, but they're singing them like badly. And I don't know what it is. It, it reminds me of like myself in high school, like me and my friends. And it makes me laugh so hard. I love these videos so much. Like I said, I repost most of them on my Insta stories. These guys are so funny. The main thing they do is they song covers. <laughs> They're wearing like fur jackets, sideways hats, big old scarves. Like they're looking ridiculous and they're doing like One Direction covers. One of the ones I did recently was Dilemma by Nelly and <laughs> I can't even, you have to watch their videos, okay? It's so funny. If you follow any of these TikTokers, follow these ones. They make me laugh so hard. I love, love, love the song covers they're doing. It's just like pure joy to me, pure happiness to me. They're so funny. You could tell that when they're doing them that they're having a good time. There's nothing worse than when you're watching like a, especially a short form video and it doesn't look like the person's having a good time. It looks like they're doing it just to get like likes or just to get a laugh or just, you know, for something and I genuinely like videos where you can tell that the person is doing it for themselves like they're doing it because they love it or because they think it's really funny. I love seeing that in people's faces in these videos and I feel like I see that in these videos that they really just think that they're hilarious and I agree they are hilarious. I love these TikToks. Alright guys, and that's it for today's what I watched this month video. I know this month I watched a lot of repeat things. Really the only new things I watched were like TV shows or documentaries. When it came to movies, I was just watching a lot of old horror movies, comedy movies that I know and I loved. Still enjoy it. Next month I am going to make it a little bit more of a goal of mine to watch a few more new release movies, whether it be like mainstream movies or like Netflix, Amazon style movies. I'll try to make that a goal for next month. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all the things I talked about today, what TV shows or movie recommendations you have for me, TikTok recommendations, YouTube recommendations. Let me know. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I post here on my channel every Tuesday and Friday, so don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!